Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey, and super excited for today's guest. I'm here with the co-founder of Fitvine Wine, Mark Warren. And Fitvine isn't your typical wine company. They are on a mission to to provide cleaner, healthier wine um, that health-conscious people and athletes can enjoy that really supports their healthy lifestyles. So thank you so much, Mark, for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. Yeah, so so you want to just jump in with your with your backstory? I mean, how did you get into the wine business, and you know how did it how did it all come together for you? Because you you started out in like a uh, tech company, didn't you? Yes. So one of the other co-founders, uh, Tom and I, had built a tech company together. Uh, so we had met a little over ten years ago. Had a small tech company that we sold, um, but always had an affinity for wine. I grew up drinking homemade wine, and as we both were getting older and trying to stay active and you know, go to these events, whether it be a CrossFit event or a mud run or something, there was always just beer being sold. Uh, we knew that not everybody drank beer and it was kind of, you know, a hole there or a gap that we could fill. And we figured that if we could bring a clean wine to market um, towards people that, you know, like to be active but still want to, you know, be social, uh, that it would be, you know, uh, a fit. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, so do you want to talk a little bit about like what sets Fitvine apart from other wines? Because I know there's there are other organic wines, and I know there's a whole you know a whole bunch of other non organic wines. But uh, but yeah, just just what sets you guys apart? Sure. And our, our wine's not certified organic, but we do lab test all our wine with a, one of the industry leading labs for the past forty years with the alcohol industry, ETS Labs. So our wine. You know, they don't flag for any chemicals or pesticides or uh, Roundup or any of those other junk that you see in a lot of stuff. Um, but really the goal was, um, you know, the the mass-produced wines, and you know, without calling out names. Uh, right. you know, there's a lot of, you know, large-volume wines that are sold out there that, you know, they want to have a consistency of taste throughout all the years, which – the only way to do that is by using additives and other things and sugars and stuff like that. And there's also shortcuts in turning wine over. So we do an extended dry fermentation with the wine, which takes longer and costs more money, but it allows us to control the sugar levels in the wine uh, as well as making sure it's not affecting taste. But just like if you were to pick up a pineapple today or go get a pineapple a month from now, they shouldn't taste the same. So wine over years should not taste the same. Right. Uh, so the government allows, unfortunately, uh, 76 different additives, you know, like processed food. So there can be a lot of things inside of wine that negatively affect people. And, uh, you know, the myth out there is that people think it's just sulfites. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a very heavy sulfite of wine, it can have some negative effects. But typically it's a it's a mix of sugar, histamines, tannins, could be pesticide. And that's the hard thing. It's so many variations of what could be in the wine that could be negatively affecting people. But – you know, a lot of people stop drinking wine. They'd say, you know, one or two glasses of wine, I have a massive headache in the morning or I get GI issues or other things. So um, our thought was if we can remove all that and just make wine the way it should be made and bring it to the masses. So, you know, we're not talking about the small wineries that, you know, are only making a few thousand cases a year. You know, we're talking about bringing this to the masses and the general public and that they can grab a wine in their price point they can trust uh, that's, you know, tastes good and, and it's not going to negatively affect. Yeah, no, I love that because it, it's, most people don't think of things like wine or, I mean, even beer, I know that there's better choices for those as well, but I mean, it, it's just like the food industry. I mean, even if you're looking at a food that's really processed or a food that, that isn't, obviously you want to pick the food that isn't processed, but you know, these, some of the foods on the shelf, like they're not, you know, some of these foods aren't in real life. They're not going to last seven, eight years and not spoil or taste bad, you, you know? Exactly. So it's, and, it's the exact thing. Uh, well, some basics, you know, about wine, like wine should naturally be gluten-free and vegan. And a lot of wine isn't because of how it's made. Um, so, how, you know. How is, it, how, how is it made in other places that gluten sneaks in there? Because, yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, ideally it should just be grapes and then whatever else you add, Right. Yeah, and then sometimes it can be the filtering process. It can even be uh, it's crazy as like the sealants they use in the barrels or something. You know, it can have uh, things in it that you know get into the wine. So there's many, unfortunately, <laughs> many different things that are done inside the processing part of the wine that takes it out of that. I mean, the filtering 
Um, you know, some of the things they use to filter with are not vegan or they're not gluten free. So, um, you know, we, we spend a lot of money to make our wine and it was our mindset as a company was we'd rather make less of a profit to be able to bring a clean wine to the general public. You know, it would have been easy to, you know, do what we do and charge 25 or $30 a bottle, but that's not 90% of the wine drinkers in the United States. You know, 90% of the wine drinkers, uh, purchase between 10 and $20. Um, so, you know, it was a conscious effort. It takes us a lot of money, uh, a lot of effort, but, um, our, our mindset was to be able to do just that, just, you know, make a clean, great tasting wine that everybody could get. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And something that you were talking about the filtering, um, how is it, I'm just kind of interested to know, like, how is it different with like how you guys filter as opposed to how most commercial like wine companies are, are, are going to filter? Yeah, so we use diatomaceous earth and micron pads. So there's nothing that are uh, anything within those components that are related to fish or animals or anything. Um, some of the stuff that are used can be fish based. Really? Like that. Yeah. So it's this, you know, without. That's crazy. Doing, that, I mean, I've never heard of that before. That's, that's crazy. Very, you know, skeptical about drinking wine. Yeah. Uh, to say that, you know, we, we tr- triple filter our wine. I mean, we, we go through a lot of, a lot of extra processes to make sure that we're removing, uh, you know, any kind of things inside of the wine that, um, could affect people. And again, I mean, it's your, it's a living, breathing product, you know, cause it's mm-hmm. a food. You know? So, you know, you're never going to have a, a perfect product. You can't say, you know, we can't make a guarantee that you drink our wine. You won't have a headache or anything like that because just some people, whether they do have a sulfur, uh, if you have a sulfur sensitivity or allergy, no matter what you drink, you're going to, you know, you're going to get the wine's going to affect you, but you're also going to have those same effects eating some fruits that have sulfur in it. So, right. um, you know, it's, the objective is, is to bring to as many people as possible. Um, but, you know, there's unfortunately, you know, there will always be some component there that doesn't help everybody. Right. Just like just like, I mean, any type of food, like you said. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think something that's, you know, kind of cool with you know, with your product is that, you know, you, we hear so many news stories that like one day wine is like the best thing in the world to drink for antioxidants and heart health. And then the next day it's like the worst but it's it's you just don't know what they're testing though, or like you know what kind of wine that they're testing with with these bl- double blind studies. Uh, but whenever you know for your product though, it's so clean and, and filtered properly that they're going to be receiving more of the, of the anti- antioxidants and things that are going to provide more health benefits, right? Yeah, and unfortunately, just like if you're running parallel to food, you know the studies can be as skewed as anything it wants to be. Yeah, you got to exactly. look at who's running the studies and what their objective is, who's funding the study, you know, when they try and say that, uh, you know, meat's bad for you. Well, you can't say that grass-fed meat and your 99-cent meat have the same <laughs> correlation to the body. You can't because one right. has injections and hormones and antibiotics and all this other stuff in it opposed to, you know, something you may have to pay 9 or $10 a pound for, but it's all natural. So those are not going to have the same effect to your body. So... Yes, alcohol has negative effects to the body when drank, you know, an overconsumption. So we would never say that, oh, our wine's clean. Now you can, you know, go drink two bottles of wine. Right. <laughs> so you know, there is still plenty, plenty of alcohol. Part of, you know, our our mission was to make, you know, create clean wine, but not take all the fun out of it. So both our white wines still have 13.4 percent and our uh, reds have 13.9. So all the punch is there. Uh, so if you overconsume anything, yes, alcohol will have a negative effect as you know, as a doctor on, you know, different areas of the body. So we're talking about um, having, you know, uh, responsible uh, drinking and, you know, whether it's a glass a night or, you know, you look at even the American Cancer Society, they say, you know, a glass a night for women and, you know, possibly one, two glasses a night for men are very good for the blood and all these other things. Uh, so it's it's that consumption where you're, you're drinking, you know, responsibly um, and trying to get the benefits out of, you know, the polyphenols and resveratrol and stuff like that, um, where it's, it has, you know, positive effects, but without having the other things that shouldn't be in the body, uh, in the wine that negatively affects you. So that, that was the key is that you should be able to drink wine and enjoy it without having these weird side effects. And I mean, you'll, you're talking to enough people, you'll hear people, oh, I went to Europe and I was able to drink wine for three weeks. And it was great. I didn't have any problems. And that's because, you know, it's not being made on these mass 
standards that are having things in it that, you know, can negatively affect the body. I mean, yeah. I mean, like you were saying earlier, just the added, I mean, added sugar alone. I mean, and, and then you add in all of the pesticides that it's, it's just, it's really crazy how much that has increased. And then people are complaining of all of these stomach issues or, you know, leaky gut syndrome and things like that, that it really triggers. Yes. And it's, and it's hard because we don't want to come out and say, you know, all these wines have this and it's, right, you know, right, right. you yeah. have to test. Uh, I mean, there's thousands and thousands of bottles of wine. So, um, but where our idea is that there's enough people that have said they either have effects or stop drinking or whatever that they've been able to try our wine and not have those negative effects. So um, we know there's there's some differences of what's going on. And if you're looking at just we want to go to a macro level, um, you know, on a basic level of, of measurement, we know that on a on an average bottle of wine, it typically has somewhere between two and two and a half grams of sugar per liter. Mm-hmm. Our wines have less than one and a half. And that breaks down per five ounce glass, which is a, a typical pour of 0.22 grams. Um, so that has a, a little effect on carbs and, and calories as well. So like our white wines only have 90 calories, three grams of carbs per five ounce glass. The reds have 95 calories and 3.4 grams of carbs. Um, and, you know, as much as the myths of sulfite, you know, aren't the leading cause of people's issues, um, they do have an effect uh, somewhat, you know, to make your hands swell or feel, you know, dehydrated if it's a very over sulfite of wine. So our, you know, most wines sit somewhere between 75 and 150 parts per million. Mm-hmm. We have less than 35. Okay. So it's just enough to stabilize the wine for shelf life. Um, it's, you know, it's again, not a, an overabundance that doesn't need to be there. Um, the pH levels of the wine are, are optimized, um, which also has an effect on the mouthfeel and the taste of the wine and the acidity levels. And, uh, so we, we go a long way to make sure that we try and, um, uh, you know, bring quality wine out there that at the end of the day still has to taste good. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. And, you know, I know that you guys started this company with a big, like, fitness athlete mindset. Like, you wanted to provide uh, a wine that, you know, athletes or people that are living a healthy lifestyle that they can enjoy a glass of wine but not feel like they're sabotaging their results because they're not drinking just sugar, you know. So <laughs> did you kind of want to elaborate on that, on how you got started with the whole fitness world? Yeah, so, you know, when it, Tom and I were out doing these events and, you know, we've been active our whole lives, you know, he played hockey through college and, you know, I did martial arts for a long time. And then uh, six, seven years ago, we both, I got in first and I got him into it, but we got into CrossFit. Uh, and that was kind of a, almost a reconnect of, uh, I don't say the discipline, but the kind of volume of exercise we were doing when we were younger, you know, mm-hmm. CrossFit could be intense. Uh, so as we got into that mindset, as we went to some of these other things like Ironmans and triathlons and saw that there's a large group of these people who really like to work out, but you know, unless you're a tier one athlete, uh, most of them still like to have a drink. So we started with the idea that we thought it was just going to be for athletes. We didn't know the, the larger component to the general public. So we thought, let's start with, you know, these athletes. And we started by going to, uh, anywhere and anywhere, anywhere that anybody would let us pour wine. So we started with just selling online. We weren't in any stores. We'd go to CrossFit events, yoga studios, bar, you know, spinning classes, uh, some triathlons and just get people to try the wine. And, you know, it was, uh, you know, being inside of health and in the fitness industry that it's a little easier to get somebody to drink wine or, <laughs> or, or taste something that, you know, they think it has something less in it because right. they're used to having a sacrifice. They're like, well, if I eat cauliflower rice instead of regular rice, you know, I could lose a couple pounds. So, you know, they were almost, I wouldn't say an easy win, but, you know, it was, they have the mindset already that they're willing to make certain choices for performance. Um, when we get into more of the general public, uh, you have an opposite re- initial reaction. Their initial reaction is they're expecting it to not taste good because right. <laughs> they have that mindset of, oh, God, is this cauliflower rice? Yeah. Uh, so their initial response is, oh, my God, this actually tastes good, you know, because they're, they're coming to you expecting it to taste horrible because they exactly. think because there's something less in it that there's less taste. Um, so there was, you know, a large learning curve there as, as we got out and spoke with people. And, you know, I think our first year we did – 500 events last year we did over a thousand uh and as we got more speaking to people who weren't just this 
you know, younger active community and we got into more of the general public, uh, we found that there was a, a large need of, for people who were looking for, um, you know, wine to incorporate into what they do. Now, they may not be doing CrossFit or something like that, but they're a working professional that has a family and they want to have a glass of wine on a Tuesday night and not get up at 5.30 the next morning for work and feel like they've been run over by a truck. Right. Um, or they're aspirationally trying to make better choices. You know, they may say, well, you know, I, uh, I'm going to try and eat a salad at lunch instead of going out for some fast food or, um, you know, I, I want to try and put a 5K or a 10K on my calendar this year as a, as a goal. So they're trying to make better choices uh, and what they're looking at for food and their alcohol consumption is is paralleling that instead of having, you know, a, a mixed drink that could be heavily sugared with, you know, what gets mixed in it, whether it's juice or soda or something like that. Um, you know, so they're the beverage part of their world has started to, to tie into what they're eating as well. Exactly. No, I mean, it just it, yeah, it just fits into their lifestyle. And, you know, it's like you said, parallel to, to their beliefs. And that's that's amazing. And um, and, and I mean, you guys have, have grown pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, is it two years? So it's just over uh, about two and a half years. It was uh, a kind of very soft launch of the end of 2014. Um, you know, we didn't have any PR behind it, no marketing. We had uh, a horrible website. We had an ugly <laughs> label that Tom would yell at me all the time thinking that my son, my son drew the label. <laughs> uh, and we spent that first year just really going out and talking to as many people as we can to see if there was a need for it or you know, if people even like the product. So that was kind of all of 2015. 2016, we saw that it started having some legs. And then the kind of, I'd say, the, I don't know if you want to call it the tipping point yet. I don't think uh, I want to say we're, we've made our tipping point. But uh, the, the eye opener was we received a call from Whole Foods Markets. So uh, the, uh, the Whole Foods director for the Mid-Atlantic region. So it wasn't out of corporate. It was the Mid-Atlantic because each region could do their own purchasing. Um, they reached out to us. It was, uh, you know, I don't care what you sell, whether you're selling <laughs> cars, food, wine, technology. Uh, typically, calls don't go like this call did. It was about a 15, 20 minute call, and it was, how fast can we get it? What can we do to help? And, you know, what do we need to do to support you? So, we were away by their initial reaction. Um, and, you know, any of these large companies, um, you know, they take months to get things set up. So, it took us four or five months to get set up inside there their system with all the paperwork and doing all that. So um, that kind of fast forwards to January of 2017. At that point, we had only had distribution in the little state of Rhode Island with a few dozen stores. Uh, we launched Whole Foods in Ohio, Kentucky, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. with about 28 stores. Uh, and it was rapid fire. Um, they, they blew, the wine blew off the shelves in three days. Wow. Uh, they had it, they reordered and it blew right off again. So it was, <laughs> it was almost like kind of a, a very choking start because they didn't have an expectation of what the, you know, how fast it would move. Neither did the distributors. Um, you know, we can tell everybody how wonderful things are, but, you know, you're trying to tell people inside the industry their job. So that doesn't always work. Right. <laughs> uh, so that first kind of month and a half was a little bumpy because product was selling out so fast and customers going into the stores and they couldn't find it. Um, so we got them adjusted and uh, fast forward to today in the beginning of June, we now have distribution in just over 40 states. Um, we're in over 700 stores right now. We'll be in over a thousand by the end of June. Amazing. Uh, thank you. And Whole Foods, they've been an amazing partner. Um, they've opened us, uh, opened up their arms with welcome around the country. So we're moving into pretty much every region they are in that sells wine. Um, and we've recently brought on some other great partners as well, like Harris Teeter, um, Hannaford's, Shaw's and Star Market, Roach Brothers, Total Wines, um, uh, Earth Fair, the Fresh Market. So a lot of other uh, big names have, have come on board and, and see um, you know, the, the desire from their customers that come in the stores and asking for it. Yeah, that that's really cool. And I mean, you're having like, I mean, I, I actually I saw on your uh, on your news feed the other day, like you're having like professional teams reach out to you as well, right? I mean, you're like the official like wine provider for for some of these teams and some of these like events, right? Yeah. So we just recently signed a deal with the Boston Red Sox um, that uh, can't use the, the term official wine, but we are we have 
we have signed a three-year partnership with with the Boston Red Sox. Very cool. Um, yeah, we're super excited about it. They're they're an ama- amazing organization. Um, they believe in the brand as as much as we do. So it's um, you know starting in that New England region, um, it will help bring brand affinity uh, for people that you know, have not heard of us and, you know, help drive some of that traffic into the retailers for um, some recognition of, of the brand. So we're excited about it. We've had a lot, about 30 other teams from all all different uh, sports reach out since then. That's uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're we not that big to be able to start with all those teams. So we're going <laughs> to start and, you know, really put a formidable plan behind it yeah. and uh, excited about it. So that is uh, exciting. I mean, it, I mean, if you know the fact that it's kind of moving so quick that you have to kind of figure it out first, but that's that's still exciting, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're we're very excited because they're you know they've they're one of the oldest teams in the league. They've you know the stadium's 105 years old, mm-hmm. so it is the oldest stadium in the league, and they have a lot of history there. But they have great people who work for the team, and you know it's not about just uh, hey, let's let's uh, write a sponsorship and take some money. They're they're truly they put a I mean a massive plan behind how they're going to help us with, you know, helping to expand on, on the brand and, and really help us, you know, bring it out. So um, they're a great partner. We're excited for it. That's awesome. So like, can stores request to have you in stock? Or how does it work if like, if, if, if you're not really distributing in an, in an area yet, but a store wants to have you, do they just just reach out with interest? Yeah, so, um, you know, by the end of this year, we should have distribution, um, set up in all 50 states but awesome. so the short answer to that is yes they can reach out to us and if we're uh you know most likely we're already in discussions with a distributor in that state and if not you know we're close to it so we can get them connected pretty quickly but um based on how alcohol is sold in the united states yes it's it's what's called a three-tier system so um like companies like whole food they don't actually purchase the wine from us so in each state we have a distributor and we sell it to the distributor as the supplier or the manufacturer, and then they're the supplier to the retailers and the restaurants and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if there are stores, um, large and small, that are interested in carrying the wine, they can reach out to us direct, and we'll definitely get them connected with our partners in that state. That's awesome. Yeah, and I know, like, because I'm in Florida, I'm near, I'm near Orlando, and there's um, there's a few different places provided for me. I have um, like family and friends in West Virginia, and I know that, that they haven't been able to find anything close by, but they've been able to order it. Um, yes. Yeah, and I got to give a quick shout out to uh, my friends uh, Leah Dorchinez and Jordan Chris because they introduced me to Fitvine. And um, you have to, Mark, if you have time, um, you have to check out their their podcast. I can send you the uh, link when we jump off here, but um, but you would like them. They talk we talk a lot about fermentation and, and things like that. But um, but yeah, but they introduced me to Fitvine. And uh, what the awesome things that you were doing. So, I mean, the word of mouth alone, <laughs> advertising is, is definitely uh, working for sure. Well, thank you to them for introducing you. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, our premise has been built uh, on social media. I mean, that's that's how we started was just, you know, building the brand on social media and then, you know, starting by selling the wine only online. You know, we can ship to just over 40 states mm-hmm. um, that allow alcohol shipment. So that's how we got started. And then, you know, we brought on a team last year that, um, you know, that helped take over and put out a new website and put together a, a true plan for social media, uh, for, you know, building the brand because it's, you know, Tom and I were at a technology background, but that the social media aspect is a whole, whole different world. I mean, right. <laughs> uh, anybody who's in that, who's played in that game for years, you know, it used to be, if you, if you know how to do, you know, search engine optimization on Google, you were good, you know, but now Facebook has changed the oh, entire Instagram world. too. Uh, I mean, their, their <laughs> algorithms are insane. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, they now have 1.6 billion users, active users on wow. Facebook. So That's they are insane. the largest platform in the world. Um, and I think it was earlier this year, they showed for the first time ever that online marketing dollars has surpassed television. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I, yeah, I've, I've actually read a lot about that as well. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. I mean, it's, I mean, television is going to be so, <laughs> the use of commercials is, yeah. is so over. Well, we I how, mean, it doesn't work anymore because everybody's on their phones during right. commercials or, you know, looking at social media. So it's just, it's, it's a whole new, whole new game for sure. Yeah. So that's for us, you know, we, we've recognized that that's part of, you know, that technology background has allowed us to have, the ability to track and understand, you know, the trends with that stuff. So 
Um, we, we put a lot of energy into social media um, to help, you know, build out the brand. I mean, that's, you know, uh, we've got a long way to go, you know, even though we'll, like I said, we'll be in probably all 50 states by the end of this year, but we know we have a long way to go to still reach out to a lot of people and, you know, have them know who we are and understand, you know, what the wine's all about. That's awesome. And, you know, what's been the hardest thing for you to learn? Like you were saying, you know, you were in tech for a long time and now you're in the wine industry. Like, how hard was it for you to transition? Like, what was the hardest thing for you to learn in all of that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's a million things, but I just can't yeah, imagine yeah. going that. I mean, that's pretty extreme to, to switch to something like that. Yeah, it was, you know, there was a lot of uh, learning curves, um, but I would say probably the hardest thing um, really is, you know, that it's it's a, a layered sale. So, you know, we could go find a, a partner like Whole Foods, but if we didn't have somebody in between as a distributor, you're not selling anything. So right. it was it was a very uh, if the word difficult is is the word, but definitely challenging uh, to understand that you, you had to have um, a multi level sale within there in order to even move the product. I mean, we had stores in the very beginning calling us from day one that wanted the product. I mean, we had even some uh, regional um grocery store chains that were willing to take on the wine right away but um we didn't have distribution and we called some of the bigger distributors that you know oh it's not the right time of year it's not this it's not that so there were definitely a lot of challenges along the way of how to um navigate through that um and understand the industry because it's uh it's a delayed sale i should say so yeah. it's that, that i would say out of all the things we've had to kind of work with, I'd say that was probably our biggest challenge. Got it. Yeah. I mean, but you guys are doing an amazing job, like I said, at the whole marketing and social media. And Mark, what is the best way for people to follow you on social media and, and keep up with what you guys are doing and also your website? Yeah. So our website is just fitfinewine.com. Um, and for there, we have a calendar on there that lists all our local events. We're actually just in your neighborhood. I just came back from Orlando this morning. Oh, uh, did you? We should. Yeah. Man, we 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 played this wrong. We could have met up then. I know we were uh, we were just, I'd say, yeah, east of you, over on the island there for uh, uncorked at Cocoa Beach. Oh, cool! Uh, and I, actually, I was at Cocoa Beach yesterday. We we definitely we definitely messed this up. So we were the big tent behind the Sheridan there on the on the beach. They had a couple Very thousand cool. people for uncorked, but uh, so yeah. So fit, uh, fitfindwine dot com um, for Facebook. It's you know it's it's the Facebook you know hashtag. I'm sorry. Uh, forward slash fitvine wine and then for instagram it is fitvine underscore wine because it's time somebody else had owned the account so <laughs> but uh yeah those are the best ways to find us you know we're always posting pretty much daily about either events that are coming up or new products or um you know new states we're launching into or new partners that we're signing on so to help people find where to be able to buy the wine and things like that Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for coming on. I'm really excited for you guys. I really love what your company stands for. And I know a lot of people that drink Fitvine and absolutely love it. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate you making time to come on. I appreciate all your support and thank you for having me.